having a conversation around business, life, and real estate investing. So tune in, enjoy, and leave any questions, comments in the uh, comment section. Yeah. Yeah. Jake, how long have you been doing this, dude? This is my. I just turned thirty, and I started when I was twenty-one. So I'm like eight and a half, nine years in. How'd you start? Um, on accident. I found a. I found a. Well, I was a real estate agent when I was 21. Is that, I started as a realtor too. Yeah. So that's how you started. Started as a realtor. Didn't love it. As a young married guy, I was had a kid on the way. Were you always on call? Like the phone, yes, phone and it was. wasn't. And it was not. Um, it wasn't consistent enough. It was very scary for me to have. I felt like I needed to go, like get another job. I actually did get another job. I went and drove school buses. Are you serious? For Mesa Public Schools. You were a school bus driver? From like 5 a.m. to 9 a.m. I did that school bus driving thing. It was stupid, making like, you know, $200 a week or something. And it, 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 it was dumb. Stopped that really quickly. But that's kind of how I always felt. I felt like I needed like something stable and something that was going to like provide. Had a kid on the way. And then I found uh, somebody approached me about um, listing their house for their mom in Mesa. And they said, do you want to just buy it? And I said, yeah, how much? And he's like, 75,000. Oh my God. And I'm like, yeah, I'll, uh, yeah, I'll buy something. I called my dad. I'm like, dad, I got this deal. It's $75,000. And he's like, okay. So we got the money together, bought it. Did you wholesale it or flip it? I flipped it. How much did you make? I made um, 80,000. Was that like the moment where you were like, Eighty thousand dollars. I didn't even comprehend at that time. <laughs> well, if you were making two hundred a week, two hundred a week, and maybe like a five, six thousand dollar commission every few months. Yeah. Made eighty thousand dollars. I split it with my dad. It was amazing. I couldn't have done it without him. I had no idea. I was twenty one years old. Didn't have any idea what I was doing. Right. Um, it, it was incredible. And is that what led you down the path of like, all right, I'm going to be an investor rather than a realtor? No. At that, at that moment, I was like, oh, I can like share these pictures online that I like listed this house and I made a bunch of money and I can like be a realtor for like other house flippers. That yeah. was where my brain was at. Then I stumbled on another one within the same month that was on the MLS. I bought it on the MLS and I closed on it for $90,000. And then I just put it back on the MLS with that mindset, like I'm just going to list it. So mm -hmm. I listed it for my dad, put it back on the MLS and made like eighteen thousand dollars in a matter of five days what year is this this is a uh, 2012 2013. oh i wish i saw so i i got licensed in 13 didn't really start till 14. yeah similar story i, I took a job making nine dollars an hour at a gym being like the towel boy as a grown-ass man but i needed that <laughs> steady income i worked from 5 a.m till noon that was your 37th job yep 35th but then from noon till bed, I could be a realtor, right? And I could build yeah. up because I, I had the same thing where I needed that steady. Yeah. But dude, so you're a bit earlier than me. I really didn't figure out. I became a good realtor and built that team and did all that. But I didn't really start to figure out investing until 2018, like not that long ago, 2017. So you were 2012. When did you really say, you know what, like I know how to make money doing this? Um, so after that, after that second accidental deal that I listed back on the market, and that was like a, like, it was like a whole tale. Like I didn't do anything to it. I just knew it was a good deal. Put it back on the market. It sold immediately uh, to a flipper here in the Valley. Um, and then I kind of looked at what he was doing and this guy's like wholesaling and flipping stuff all the time. I'm, I, I think I'm onto something. Yeah. And then I bought a couple deals from um, uh, Gus and Wiley. Good friends. Good friends, bought a couple deals from them. Um, flipped them, lost money on both of them because <laughs> I got yeah. got too crazy on the remodels. I was so stoked. I thought I was on HGTV. Um, but then after that, I figured about I figured out about wholesaling, strictly getting a contract, assigning it to somebody else, and I was just doing that over and over and over again. That's how I made my living. And you have a partner who we love, Bill. When did you guys link? Bill and I linked up. Um, we rode dirt bikes together for a couple of years before we, um, I joined his real estate brokerage, but then we started. Bill has his own brokerage? 
Yeah. To this day? To this day, yeah. Brian Holt May Realty. Brian who? Brian Holt May. Oh, Brian Holt May. It's Travis Brian Holt and Bill May own the brokerage together. Nice. It's just a few agents. Um, he claims he hates it. He claims he hates I being a broker. Ne- I would never be a broker. Yeah. I mean, I have a team and I, I'm not involved in the team. Yeah, he doesn't like it. But so we got linked up in like 2017, end of 2017, um, with the idea of, um, you know, getting into, the whole, he didn't even know wholesaling existed. So he's a badass realtor. He was a badass realtor and he bought and flipped a house in Tempe and made a ton of money, $80,000 like, or yeah, something. Yeah, like, whoa, what are we on to like, this is This is cool. And you had had the groundwork, so you're like, hey, your experience and knowledge with my experience knowledge and hustle yeah, like you don't need to take on that property for three months you can just wholesale this thing and he had no idea that was a thing no idea it existed so if looking back and if someone's watching this that's in the same spot that you were in like what would you have done differently or what what do you wish you would have done sooner and you've even had evolutions recently like yeah, what do you just what do you wish that you could have told that 25 year old jake like yo bro I wish that I wouldn't have tried to do it all on my own. Like I wish I would have, instead of trying to like, you know, get a wholesale deal every once in a while and make five grand or 10 grand, I wish I would have surrounded myself by people like I am now. Surrounded myself by people that are doing big things that I want to do and latch on and learn and, you know. That's what I always say, that's what right? I would do. tether your boat to a bigger boat. Yep. Or inject yourself into a culture or a community, kind of like we have with Soul Pod, and be like, "Yo, I just love being around you guys, and I'm gonna bring value, yep. and I'm gonna insert myself as this piece." And then eventually, like just before this, we were talking about, okay, like how do we raise funds? How do we go buy bigger deals? How do we go create like legacy wealth yep. instead of just you know this deal by deal basis, which yep. obviously treats us very well, but it's not. I don't think it's the end goal. Like if I'm flipping houses in ten years, I'm gonna be upset. Yes, absolutely. I, I just think that if I would have if I would have started that way and not have been, uh, I don't know if greedy is the right word, but just kind of Scarcity. close-minded, like I've got to do this all for myself and take all the money I can. If I would have just surrounded myself with people and operated you know, from abundance or a mindset of abundance anyway, I would have got to where I am now way earlier and probably created a lot more long-lasting you know, wealth developing relationships way earlier on. What could you speak to about analyzing a deal? One thing you do really, really well that I've noticed with our time together is like you're able to assess deals really well and be like, yeah, I'll buy that. Yeah. I think there's two things that I want you to speak on. One, being okay with the risk because there is risk saying yes. Mm -hmm. And then two, how are you underwriting and making sure like, hey, that, that works. Like what's kind of your threshold there? Uh, as far as numbers wise, when I came with numbers, yeah, how I mean, like, it? well, I guess speak to your spreadsheet. Is that maybe that's one thing yeah. I want to hear about? Like, all right, if if um, if I send you a deal and I say, hey Jake, can you like just today we're in power, mm-hmm. and I said, hey, can you pay? Uh, what was I asking? Four sixty on this. Yep. Super clean house. You underwrote it real quick. Like what goes through your mind in that process? So first thing I do, I get the address, open it in maps, get the general, like, you know, four major cross streets. Um, I obviously have MLS access, so I go and, you know, draw a little circle around the area. Do you like stay in your sub? What, stay in the subdivision, go? satellite view, so I can make sure all the roofs look the same, like I'm in the same area. Yeah. I try to start there. You're trying to get like for like. Yep, and that's why on that deal, that was the, you know, there was only really one other house that I was comfortable with using. Uh, get an idea on value, and then I put it in my spreadsheet that I'll share with anybody. Anybody wants to DM me or text me, I'll, I'll share it with them. Plug it in, I plugged it in at 460, figured it needed $15,000 um, and kind of just worked backwards. You know, if it, there's a break even bar on there, what I have to sell it for to break even. And if the, if the profit at the bottom is showing, you know, over 20 grand, I'm usually okay with it, especially in a market like this. Um, there's some deals that if it's like a stucco tile East Valley deal and the break even number is a no brainer. Like there's no way I won't 
sell it for more or at least that break even number, I'm okay with a break even deal. Yeah, because you're just like, I need volume, I need to move. And if the market keeps appreciating. I, I don't right, make money if I don't buy houses. That's what I tell people all the time. They're like, well, Temp, how do you assess like market risk and what if it changes? And I'm like, well, I can't stop doing this. This is literally how I make my can't money. Can't be paralyzed. So like, I'm gonna have to adapt and buy good deals and underwrite and do all those things when the time comes. But like, I have to buy a house today. That's how I make money. That's yeah. how I put food on the table. So. I learned there's kind of a good um, balance with Bill and I. Um, I am more of let's buy it. There's a deal that's in front of us. It's not a losing deal, so let's buy it. Let's go. Let's try it. It's working out right now. Uh, let's do it. Bill's kind of more, you know, which is really good for us. He totally, yeah, yeah, right? he totally balances us out. You know, he'll assess it more. Yeah, but this one has a pool. This one has an addition. This one, you know. Um, now, guys, this interview is kind of impromptu, so if it's not as polished as they would like, we're good. The value is in the message. But will you hit the AC down a little, Cole? Um, I'm in this what, Canyon Boy flannel. Canyon Boy, you guys, last year I stopped buying houses for like a week when the pandemic hit and I was bored, so I started a Canyon Boy flannel company, which you'll see these hats and this flannel I just gave Jake one. And it was my birthday yesterday and Jake and Bill bought me the coolest gift ever. They bought me an electric motorcycle bike thing. A Super 73. Dude, it is so cool. It's dope, man. It's new fun. You're kidding. I, and I'm je I've always was jealous watching your IG stories and you cruising around. I was like, that's so cool. But I was like, I would never buy one. Downtown Chandler, dude, you're gonna be you're gonna be skiing, bro. Dude, thank you. Um, I want to tell people about the greatest life hack ever that I always tell people, and no one believes me. And then you, one thing I love about you, dude, is like you. If someone is doing something and having results, you don't ask for like a million explanations why. You're just like, well, what are you doing? And I want to do it. Like, give me the links. Yeah, you're like, send me the links. So you guys, I cold plunge. I get in cold water four to five times a day. It's this deep freezer that I converted and I do Wim Hof breathing and just cold water, I'm telling you is a life changer. So I was telling you about that and you were like, send me the links. Like now, next thing I know, you're sitting in cold water for like 10 minutes at a time. How, what has cold water done for you? What is cold plunging done for you? So it's not only the cold plunging, it's the, the breathing stuff before the, the Wim Hof. Wim oh. Hof before a cold plunge and then cold plunging I tell everybody, they're like, what does it do? What, what benefits? I'm like, dude, it's changed my life in every aspect of my life. I show up as a better dad. I show up as a better husband. I show up at work mentally there, ready to go. My, I feel better, you know, mental health, physical health. I feel it, it really centers me. It gets me, if I ever feel like I need to get back on track, if I'm, you know, drifting a little bit, it, boom, it centered me back. I was just talking to Gus yesterday. I got permission to put a cold plunge in the office. Really? Putting one, we're putting one in the, one of the bathrooms in the office so we can just go flash every- if Dude, we, I we love go, flashing. You guys, flashing is like where you don't do a full 90 second or two minute or a five minute or, just like in the afternoon, if you go grab a 15 second flash into the cold water, Dump it's, your like head a, and it's just a just, cup of yep. coffee for like your soul. You're like, Woo, all right, I'm ready, I'm back. It's like Wim Hof says, it's like getting high on your own supply. Dude, it is so gangster, I love it. So it's cold awesome. water is the greatest life hack that I have found. Like, and I know that's a strong yeah. statement, but legit. 100% believe it, I agree. And for us in the valley, like when you just look at it, just like from a very practical standpoint, it is so hot here. And when you're hot and you're tired and you're sweaty, and you can go bring your body temperature down and get back to center. And your insides are cold for like an hour afterwards. Yeah, um, man, it just awesome. brings you so. But the biggest thing about it, I'll, I'll stop rambling no, about no. it. I love it. Biggest thing about it, I, I, I have issues with anxiety, stress and anxiety. And when I do, I do it in the morning, 6 a.m., between 6 and 7 a.m., I go Wim Hof and then I get in it. It is so so cold it's not even cold water it's like it's it's a different level of cold oh, it's, it's freezing cold water and it's so hard you don't want to do it when you're about to get out of bed and go do that you don't want to go sit in freezing cold water and then you do it you get in and your brain is saying get out of here mm -hmm. and getting past that point it's one of the most stressful things on your brain and your body to do 
after I get out of there, anything that comes at me throughout the day is like way less stressful than that thing I did in the morning. Cause you already like, you already proved to yourself that I can get through something. Yes. And I can finish and I can be disciplined. And not only that, I already did something way more stressful than this stupid problem that's coming at me. Yeah. Mentally, subconsciously, I feel like it helps me, my brain understand like that. I've got this. And I think the Wim Hof breathing too, because you really get connected in your thoughts and your breathing and your breath holds. You guys, if you haven't tried Wim Hof, like on your first round, like if you just held your breath right now, just you'd probably hold it like 45 seconds, maybe. No, you're doing two minutes easy. So after you oxygenate, so you do these 30 deep breaths and you do a hold, I mean, you're holding your breath on your first session. You could have never done it on your first session. You're holding your breath over two minutes. Yep. And then I've held my breath up to three minutes because you oxygenate your body. Like breathing is so important because your body, it's literally your lifeblood, right? Like that's how your body yep. survives. And in our society today, we're just kind of surface level on all things. Lazy breathers. Breathing included, super shallow breathers. We're not really giving our body like that nourishment and the breath that it's looking yep. for. So then when you fully oxygenate your body and your cells are just like fully oxygenated, they're like, oh my God. And then you hold your breath. You're like, I don't need to breathe right now. And it's such a mind thing because your brain is like, you should breathe, you should breathe. And your body's like, no, nah, I'm all good. Bro. You don't need to breathe right good. now. And like that breath hold. And then I've only experienced it three or four times, but at the absolute point of um, desperation at the end of your hold, try to do 15 more seconds. I'm not an expert on this, but they say it gives you a trigger of like a DMT trip of like what it feels like, like when you die and you get this flush and I've had it legit three, four or five times. And I've Wim Hof over a thousand times and only three or four times you have this moment of like, I don't want to get, it sounds weird, but dude, you have this moment of like, you go to like another place or something mm -hmm. and you're like, everything's clear. You're like, Oh, I get it now. It's weird yep. and wild. So if you have a really good session and then you hit that, you're done. You're like, you're grasping for air and you push it another 15, you get that release and it's only happened a few times. Man. It is magical. I tell everybody, I live in a cul-de-sac and like people come over from my cul-de-sac. They see it on my Instagram. They're like, I gotta do this. They go jump yeah. in. We were on vacation for a week. And people were like posting pictures of my cold plunge. Like, oh, yeah, cold plunge and Jake, yeah. cold plunge. And so I explain everybody to it. Like, you Wim Hof before it, and you make your blood like this superhuman, like, drug blood for your body. Yeah. And then, after you do that, you get in cold water, and all that superhuman blood rushes to your brain, your heart, your organs. Mm -hmm. It's a feeling. It's, it's, a, it's unbelievable. And I love it. And I always tell people the medicine is on the other side of the pain because it sucks when you're in there. Dude. Yep. Make no mistake about it. Like yep. It's pain. It's uncomfortable. You want to get out the whole you time. You want to get out. But when you do get out, the medicine is on the other, other side of that pain. You're like, you have that rush. The blood now starts going back to every extremity and you have this euphoric like, oh my gosh. Dude, it's a hack. Yeah, you're making me want a cold plunge right now. Oh, bro. It's, it, it has, uh, those closest to me and around me have noticed and, and can attest to it. It's a, it's changed my life. It's awesome. I'm glad I didn't hesitate or just sent it. I love it. I love it. Um, if you need a link, I have a, I have a whole link, a copy and paste link that outlines everything you need to buy to build it with instructions, everything. Cause I just been trying to freaking share with everybody. I just blast it. Say it'll be in the description. It'll be in it'll, the description. It'll be in the description. It says it'll be in the description. <laughs> um, another, like, one of the last things I want to leave people with is like, it's what the soul pod's all about and our friendship and everybody in our circle is like becoming the best version of yourself. Then you can become the best investor, teacher, brother, mother, sister, friend. Um, I think when we were both younger, we were so focused on the dollars. And you, you always hit a ceiling when you're only focused on money. Yeah. And the moment you start focusing on you, which is like the actual vehicle that takes you to all these dreams. Yep. So have you noticed like in, in very putting your self development first that you've had greater success than ever before? Yeah, absolutely. That's why I started off saying it's 
changed my life in every aspect. But not just the cold, like, but just like, I feel like your hunger and desire for like development now is like expanded way past oh, the yeah. cold, way yeah. past the breathing. Like, look at us, we're starting 75 hard today. Are yes, we in? Bro, we're in. I sent, I texted to my wife and she said, no way I'm doing that. <laughs> yeah, Dee was like, that's intense, but she's actually, feel, she's been drifting off center a little. You guys, if you haven't ever read Napoleon Hill's Outwitting the Devil, he talks about how 98% of society is essentially drifting, right? They're not, they don't, they're, to use the book's metaphor, like the devil's pretty much got his hooks on you and you're just, your hypnotic rhythm, you're just kind of wandering through life without like an aim, purpose, a target, where 2% of people are outside of the control of him mm -hmm. and they are purposeful, intentional, and they are not drifting. And I, I always love looking at the drift because it's like when you have that North star of like, Hey, this is who I want to be. These are my desires. It's never one day that like, you're like, no, I'm going to fall off track and all my habits are going to turn bad. It's like one degree at a time. And then next thing you know, you're like, Oh, I'm 45 degrees off what I wanted to become. Yeah. So I don't know where I was headed with all that, but the drift is real. Cold brings you back to center getting in the correct circle mm -hmm. empowers you to operate at a certain level because like we, if you were slacking, like I wouldn't want to spend time with you. And if I was slacking, like you wouldn't be like right. driving across town to spend time with me right? because it, I wouldn't be filling your cup in that way. So well, I remember where we were with that. It's like your self-development has expanded way further than just, yeah. It's like, a, it's like I crave something hard to do. Dude, I love that. You know what I'm saying I crave something that's like gonna like be really hard, like holding my breath for three minutes or sitting in cold water. Those are two small examples. Something that's like not really fun to do, but I know is gonna have a benefit for my self development. Okay. Reading a book that I hate doing. I hate reading books. Mm -hmm. Reading a book, 75 hard seems really, it seems like more than 75 hard. Dude, it's gonna be extremely hard. It seems but really we, hard. We can do but, it. Yeah, like, are we interested or are we committed? We're committed. I'm in. I, I'm in, and I, and I crave stuff like that that is gonna be really hard for me to do, but I know at the end of it there's something waiting that's awesome, and and I've noticed that when I'm doing that kind of stuff, all of the other pieces of my life come together. Um, just focusing on yourself and being able to show up and being being present and being um, operating from a from a mindset of abundance and um, sharing knowledge and things with other people. Uh, when you focus on that stuff and you focus on yourself and getting yourself right, all the other stuff in my personal experience has just kind of fallen into place. It works out. We gotta end this interview. Let's go cold plunge. Let's do it. I'm hot in this flannel. You look good though. You're hot <laughs> with two teeth, get it? But no, let's go. Um... Do you want to go cold? Yeah. Like, Your house? Yeah, my cool. water's on its last few days though, so. Well, I mean, it's not like. A little grimy. Mm -hmm. A lot of friends are using it, but hey, don't worry. Hey, you guys, we love you. Mm -hmm.